Taste is a very subjective thing. Some people love pineapple on pizza, some hate it. Some folks are happy to eat a vegan diet, others are practically full-time carnivores. But what accounts for those foods that can change their taste over time? Is that you and your personal taste changing over time, or is the food itself different? Turns out that sometimes things don't really taste the way you remember, and for some pretty interesting reasons. Number 10. Some authentic Chinese and Indian dishes taste different in the United States because of oil that can't be used in America. Most of us are aware that there's a distinct difference between Chinese food in China and Chinese restaurant food that you'll find in America. When it comes to Sichuan Chinese, one of the reasons for a difference in taste goes a little beyond the predictable, however, and has to do not with just what is being cooked, but how. In this case, it's the oil. In America, most food is cooked with things like vegetable oil, canola oil, even peanut oil. But in China, most Sichuan food is cooked with things like mustard seed oil or casio oil, which you can almost never find in the US. Mustard seed oil has a spicy aroma and gives food a little kick. You've probably never seen it for sale at a supermarket, however. The express mustard oil is banned by the FDA. That's because the oil has a high erucic acid content. In the 1970s, experiments found that erucic acid caused heart and kidney disease in rats. The oil was therefore banned, but later studies showed that effect didn't really carry over to humans, and in fact, the oil may be beneficial to us. But science is slow sometimes, and a red tape is slower, so the ban never got lifted. The oil has a very high smoke point and imparts great flavor, especially in spicy dishes, so it's favored for things like using chilies. If you want to eat foods you first discovered in parts of China and northern India, they'll likely never taste the same in America unless you use the oil, which legally is very hard to do. Number 9. Brussels sprouts really did taste worse back in the day. The humble Brussels sprout, bane of children everywhere. But as an adult, have you found that you kind of like the taste now? You probably just thought your taste buds matured, and maybe they did, but that's not the whole story. Brussels sprouts really do now taste better. The fact is, kids weren't wrong back in the day. The sprouts were bitter and unpleasant. So, in the 1990s, Dutch scientists and farmers worked together to isolate the bitter-tasting compounds in the sprouts. Once identified, they put in efforts to begin breeding strains that naturally had the least amounts of those bitter compounds. Once they managed to create the tasty new hybrids, those were farmed and eventually they replaced the old bitter strains of the veggie and since the 1990s brussels sprouts really have tasted better number eight banana candy tastes like banana just not the bananas we eat is any candy flavor more of a perplexing letdown than banana it tastes nothing like banana and yet every banana candy tastes the same how did this happen this all dates back to a time before Americans even ate bananas. Fake banana flavor comes from a fruit ester called isoamyl acetate. You can find it in a lot of fruits, and it was introduced before most Americans had ever tasted banana back in the 1860s. But when the gross Michael banana became a real thing people could buy about a decade later, there was a distinct similarity. Gross Michael contained a reasonable amount of isoamyl acetate. But then, as you may know, the gross Michael fell victim to a serious banana plague and was wiped out. In the 1960s, the Cavendish banana, placed it, and we still eat these today. The Cavendish has some isoamyl acetate in it, but not nearly as much as the Gross Michael did. So it and the fake banana taste almost nothing alike. But once upon a time, that flavor was much closer to the original banana. Number seven, American purple Skittles taste different from purple Skittles everywhere else. Speaking of candy, do you think you could identify every flavor of Skittle in a blind taste test? It'd be much harder than you think if you were using international Skittles, because as it happens, purple Skittles don't taste the same around the world. Or more specifically, the US government has ensured that American Skittles aren't the same as everyone else's. In most countries, purple Skittles are flavored with the delicious black currants. Not so in America, where the flavor wasn't legal for ages. Many years ago, black currant was outlawed in America because the plants carried a disease called white pine blister. In time, this ban was lifted, but by then, the black currant had missed its opportunity. Few people wanted to start growing it, and the flavor was not part of the American experience, so it just never caught on. Number six, Coca-Cola tastes different from country to country. One of the most important things for a product that's enjoyed all over the world is consistency. For something like Coca-Cola, that has to be extremely important, or so you'd think anyway. And even though the company claims on their own websites that it's the same everywhere, that's not 100% true. The formula for Coca-Cola is the same the world over, so the syrup will always be the exact same in every country. But there's more than syrup in Coke. The product is always bottled locally, and each country uses their own water sources and sometimes their own sweeteners as well. This is why Mexican Coke is a thing, because they use cane sugar as a sweetener, which gives it a different taste than the high fructose corn syrup of American Coke. If you've traveled around, you know for a fact that water tastes different from country to country and even city to city sometimes. So the end product that Coca-Cola releases in some countries will absolutely taste different. Number five, Kit Kat bars taste different around the world. Every country has their own candy and treats, but there are a handful of candies that transcend borders and are enjoyed the world over. One of the most popular has to be Kit Kat, which can be found 
found all around the world in about 100 countries. That said, it's not going to taste the same all around the world because despite the name and familiar packaging, it's not even made by the same company everywhere. Kit Kat is huge in Japan, so much so that people in Japan actually think it's a Japanese product, though it actually originally comes from the UK. In Britain, Kit Kat is a Nestle product, but in America it's made by Hershey. The US version has far more sugar, while the UK version has a higher cocoa content and fat content. In taste test, most people agree the UK Kit Kat is far better. In Japan, it even comes in dozens of varieties. Number four, McDonald's fries changed four times in 30 years. One of the most popular items on the McDonald's menu is the French fries, which a lot of people seem to feel are the best in the fast food world. But if you're old enough, you may be wistful for an even more delicious fry that McDonald's used to sell because they really were, once upon a time, different. In fact, they've changed a number of times over the years. For a very long time, McDonald's fries were cooked in beef tallow, which imparted a lot of flavor and made them hugely popular. But it was also big on saturated fat and cholesterol. Over the years, campaigns against unhealthy eating took their toll and McDonald's finally relented. Vegetable oil replaced the beef tallow in 1990. People were largely unimpressed and stock prices dropped. McDonald's tried to add beef flavor to the fries to compensate, but that led to lawsuits from vegetarians and Hindus who didn't know they were eating beef. In 2002, the oil changed again because the vegetable oil's trans fats became a concern. In 2007, another oil change happened. So that's four different oils in 30 years, each one altering the overall French fry flavor. Number three, tomatoes have lost their flavor because we bred them that way. Try to imagine a world without tomatoes, all those delicious sauces we'd be missing out on from ketchup to pizza to marinara. It's harrowing. But even more harrowing is the fact that tomatoes are legitimately becoming less tasty. If you've ever picked up a tomato at the store to slice it for a burger or salad and thought it was bland and tasteless, it wasn't just an unlucky pick. We're doing it on purpose. Scientists sought to answer why tomatoes don't taste as good and compared hundreds of varieties around the world. They determined that there are 13 compounds which chiefly contribute to the taste of a tomato, and as we seek to breed bigger tomatoes that are more resistant to pests and bad weather, we're sacrificing those compounds. Less popular or artisanal varieties of tomatoes still pack a flavor punch because these ones have not been bred to death, as it were. But the most popular tomatoes only became the most popular because we stripped away everything we liked about them in the first place. You can still find a tasty tomato now and then, but you're not wrong if you think they used to taste better. You're also not wrong if you think they're going to keep getting worse. Number two, apples used to be tastier and crisper. Apples are one of the most popular fruits in the world. America alone grows 2,500 different varieties, and there are over 7,500 varieties in the world. And if you're feeling like apples these days just aren't as good as they once were, you're not wrong. The humble apple is being bred into the ground. Climate change has been contributing to a decline in flavor and crispness from apples, which have a harder time adapting to environmental changes and to losing natural levels of malic acid as a result. Apples that are less sweet, less crisp, and even mealy are a result, and there are diseases killing off a lot of apple varieties, leaving us with fewer to enjoy overall. And that's not the only issue. The Red Delicious Apple is a standout in the world of, well, bad apples. The name is generally half accurate. Red, yes, delicious, not always. This is because the fruit has literally been bred, just like those tomatoes, towards looking better than it tastes. Growers have consistently tried to perfect that brilliant red color, eliminating any variations that lead to green or yellow, but sacrificing the deliciousness as a result. Nowadays, Red Delicious are extremely unpopular in North America because they just don't taste good anymore. Number one, airplane food tastes bad because of where you're eating it, not what you're eating. Airplane food has been mocked for being tasteless, textureless, and gross for years. And while it's not always that bad, there's definitely something weird about it sometimes, and you're not wrong for thinking so. There's actual science behind why food just isn't as good on an airplane. First, the basics. Airplane cabins are dry, literally desert dry. Cabin pressure and this lack of humidity plays havoc with your taste buds, dulling them terribly. You lose as much as 30% of your ability to taste salty and sweet at altitude. Your mucous membranes also swell, affecting your sense of smell, which also dulls flavor. Surprisingly, uh, there's also a little more going on. Even the sound on a plane makes things taste worse. The sound of an airplane engine becomes a distraction to your ready-tack senses and makes it even harder to perceive any decent flavor from the food. 